Hey guys, Booligan here with Booligan Shooting Sports. Today, giving you a longer format video introduction of my long rider, spacey themed 3D printable kit to convert the 16 inch Heritage Rough Rider pistols into a legal non NFA rifle, a carving, as it were. A um, little bit about the background of these. Uh, legally, you can take a pistol, provided it has a barrel length over 16 inches, and convert it into a rifle, um, provided the overall length remains over 26 inches, and obviously the barrel length maintains over 16 inches. Um, I'm not going to address the legality any more than that, because this is legal, it's very easy stuff to look up, and um, yeah, I'm not going to waste my time with it. So, these are really inexpensive. Now, Heritage makes a 16 inch pistol. It's kind of silly. The barrel literally goes to here. The thing's ridiculous. They also do make a carbine version already. Um, but the, the carbine version, it has a straight line stock coming off of it. It's not the normal pistol style stock. Um, and it's also like three times as expensive as the pistol version. The pistol version, you can usually find like 150 bucks or so. Um, whereas the carbine version, most of the times that I've seen it, it has been like close to $400. And that's kind of crazy for what it is. Um, so yeah, so I grabbed this guy and set about designing a carbine conversion kit for it. Starting at the stock, you, these are all prototype parts. So the prints are kind of rough. Like there's some parts there where the bridging wasn't going as well as it was supposed to be. The overhangs, excuse me, weren't going as they were supposed to. Um, so it's pretty rough prototype, but it's to see if it works. But Starting with the stock, I used the geometry from the uh, grips that I had already put together based on when Kevin's design, um, but just tweaked for a little bit better fit and then set it up so that they wrapped around and had another point of locking in on the grip. I then added the stock geometry from a, uh, an SVD uh, Dragonov sniper rifle um, literally slapped that sucker in there and then just kind of traced it, scaled it obviously, and you do have a kind of short length of pull with this, but just scale it to fit. Uh, it's secured with some uh, nuts and bolts and it's all metric stuff. Um, I want to say it was M5 um, bolts with the accompanying nuts. And as you can see, I didn't size them just right. So on the actual release version, that's going to be a little bit smaller. Uh, you do have a sling mount in the back as well. Your length of pull on this is short just because you're dealing with the limitations of printing this on a printer bed. Um, I actually had to print this on my Anycubic Viper and that's kind of why it has that finish there because of the print bed and it barely, barely fits on the bed of the Viper. So I have to tweak it a little bit to fit on enders just because ender printers are much more common than, you know, larger format printers. Um, but if you want a little bit more length to pull, I am going to have, you know, stuff like an add-on butt pad and add-on cheek rest that you'll be able to add as well. But honestly, the length of pull is short, but it's really not bad at all for how small this gun normally is. Now, because it is a small gun, you do get a little bit of finger overhang here. Um, and because it's sort of a thumb hole style stock, you do have to pull your thumb out to recock it for now. We'll get to that in a second. Up front, we'll take off, well, we'll leave the handguard in place uh, for now, just because it makes a god awful racket when you take it off. Um, but this is a variation and a spinoff of my Space Rider uh, kit, which has just been realistically elongated quite a bit. Um, so much so that it is two pieces. Now this can print on an Ender 3. I printed this on my Ender 3 version 2. Um, and then they're just joined in the middle. These are hollow throughout to quicken up the print time, to actually add a little bit of structural rigidity to it as well, because walls are, are in general a little bit stronger than infill. Um, so it's got more walls because it's got a hollow throughout, but there is also an alignment piece that that is glued in place. So it's centered on the barrel and this alignment piece and it locks together very solidly. So you can use epoxy, you can use super glue um, to attach those together. And realistically, I'm not worried about that coming apart at all. It's very solid. 
Um, moving up to the front, you have another sling mount, which is nice. Something actual practical for me, which is shocking that you can mount a sling um, to it. And then it does have that sort of integrated uh, compensator look with the two holes up top and the vent there. Um, it's a 22. The compensator is mainly there for looks. It's not really going to do much to change anything, uh, but it is kind of a cool look. So uh, I kept it on there because it's my design and I can do what I want. Um, to give you a place to hold on to, there is a separate printable handguard here, um, which is wherever you want it to be. It's I'll also use it to kind of hide the seam a little bit. Um, but hey, if you want to print one, and have it all crisscrossed it out up front, you can do that. Um, so you can see the seam there where I kind of join these two bits together. Now, this is secured. It slides over the barrel, it slides over the frame, um, and is secured using these, this screw right here, which screws into the existing hole for mounting your ejection rod housing. Um, it still ejects as normal. Uh, one cool thing coming out of this currently is the fact that you can actually use the, the carry or excuse me, the handguard to eject your spent rounds. You see how it actuates the handle? It's kind of just the goofy little thing that happened through happenstance, but it's kind of fun. What I am working on, however, is a system that will use this probably either notched out for this because we don't want it to be ejecting the rounds in this mode um but so that when you pump it back it actually recocks the hammer i've got a couple of ways that i'm going about this to try it out um that's not going to be in the first or second release realistically that's going to take a little bit of time for me to work it out but i'd love to be able to convert this thing to pump action just be kind of a cool design that you, that you go pop, 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 and go through it quickly. Aiming this is as easy as aiming it was before. You have integrated sights, front and rear. On this version, this rear notch is too wide. It's the same notch width that I used for the pistol version, which worked really well when you were holding it out at arm's length. But now that you're tucking it a little bit closer, uh, this rear notch is massive. So the release version has the proper size notch. You'll also notice two little holes right there. I also designed an, a railed insert piece that you can do, you put it in there, it fits in the notch perfectly, screw it in, and then you can add an optic of your choosing uh, because that geometry is pretty easy and dialed in. I will also be releasing like an RMR footprint mount, maybe a T1 footprint mount, just to kind of easily pop it in there and have kind of a no muss, no fuss, easy way of mounting optics on this. Um, it uses quite a bit of filament to print. Now, again, I printed this on my Ender. These bits were on my Ender. This was on my Viper. This was on my Viper. Um, it's all using PLA plus. You don't need to go exotic with this. None of this is pressure bearing and none of it is particularly heat intensive. Um, it's just, it's simple, simple prints. You don't need to print it a hundred percent infill or anything like that. I have mine printed at, I think eight walls, either eight or six walls which are kind of my norm. And then like 50% infill and that's overkill. It's way stronger than it needs to be. Um, I haven't had any issues whatsoever with strength on this. Now, one thing that a lot of people did ask is like, okay, cool. So you're going to be like ripping your arm apart, burning your arm. We'll use this arm. You're burning your arm every time you fire this because that massive blast from the cylinder. Yeah, guys, this is a 22. Your cylinder blast isn't that much. It exists. I'm not going to say it doesn't, but it's not that much at all. When you're holding this normally, see where that cylinder gap is, it's gonna be blowing out straight from there. Like my arm is like 10 to 11 inches away from it. Probably not going to be a problem. However, in case it becomes a problem or in case you wanna use like WMR, you know, 22 WMR, 22 Magnum, it might have more muzzle blast or more cylinder blast, excuse me. Um, so on the release version, you'll see there's a little hole on both sides of there. 
and the files will include a little blast shield that clips in here, comes down, and then you screw it into the side, which is some standard hardware. And then you'll have a blast shield either for the left or for the right. The reason why I don't build them into the design itself is because one, you really don't need it in my opinion. And as soon as you do that with something like, we'll pull here's, here's uh, Vin's uh, original kit. It was there all the time. And what would happen is that muzzle or that cylinder blast had to go somewhere. So he had all these ports built into it. But a lot of times what would happen is that has to go somewhere. It wouldn't necessarily fall through those vents and it would kind of come back. And a lot of people were reporting when they were using it, when they were using the original kit that I kind of based some of my geometries off of, um, that they were getting just a lot of gas blow by in their face because that gas has to go somewhere. So I didn't want to have it added on unless you really needed to have it added on. And that way, say if you're exclusively a right-handed shooter, you can just attach the one on this side those excess gases are going to follow the path of least resistance in general, and they're going to blast here out the side where there's nothing there. That way you're not having to worry about a separate left-handed kit versus a right-handed kit or anything like that. Um, it just sort of wanted to make it modular for you. If you wanted to have the shield, great. If you want to have both shields on there, okay. I don't know where the gas is going to go. It's probably, I did design it to kind of vent towards the front, um, but we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, thus far I haven't needed it, but a lot of people asked about it, so I wanted to go ahead and include it as part of the files. Um, the files for this, as with all of my files, will be publicly released. I release all of my files for free eventually. However, in order to help the development work, in order to help pay for parts kits and pay for base guns and materials and filament and printers, um, I do have my subscription website. Uh, my subscription website, as you should know by now, is booliganshootingsports.com. These files will be released there before the end of August, probably on like Monday or Tuesday on the 30th or the 31st. Um, and they'll be released there for them to kind of beta test around a little bit. Um, and it's released for my subscribers who are at the all access level and above. Then about a month later, we've worked out some of the bugs in the, with the subscription squad. And uh, then I release them publicly on my library page. The website for that is very easy. It's booligancustomgunworks.com. So that's the easy way to remember it. If you want to help support the work through donations and subscriptions, it's Booligan Shooting Sports. If you just want the files for free, Booligan Custom Gunworks. Just understand you're going to be getting them a little bit later. But there you go. There's my Heritage Long Rider Space Carbine. I just, you know, one day if I design enough weapons for Firefly Season 2, they're actually going to make a Firefly Season 2. And then maybe I'll have a job designing guns for it. This will never happen, but it's fun to joke about. And really, I love the aesthetic of that kind of retro, futuristic, kind of spacey look. I just think it's super, super cool. And this thing is awesome. And it's actually a really, really handy little carbine. I think the thing is just super, super cool. So stay tuned for the launch of this very soon and for the public launch a little bit after that. And uh, if you guys print them, um, go ahead and, and you know post it on our social media, share it to Instagram and stuff like that because I love to see how this stuff turns out. I love to see the kind of work that you guys are doing with our designs. Um, and uh, you know, of course, love that you guys watch. So as always, thanks for watching.